took forever. Yeah. It doesn't usually do that. Oh, just some long countdown for some strange reason. That's what she said. I don't know if she did. Ah. If she did. It's taking too long. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay, chatty chat. You have, I don't know, three minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes. Make up a time. I don't care. <laughs> Six minutes. That's the most. That's all we get. Let's see. How do I look on camera? It looks like I haven't put makeup on, but I'm wearing a full face of makeup. And I did my hair. It's just something is just off tonight. Blame it on everything. I am. <laughs> I mean, also, when do you not? That's true. But I lost a bunch of weight, and that changes things as well. I mean, it does. Changes your whole face structure, so I might just need to do a whole new lighting rig. Yeah. And stuff. But, um, otherwise I'm gonna look like an old grandma. Which apparently I am. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to say this now, even though the chat's not here yet. I think we're allowed to say this on Twitch, but MILF is not a compliment, okay? I mean, it might be for, like, 40-year-old women with, you know, babies and kids and stuff. That That's probably a compliment then, but maybe don't say it to your 30-year-olds. <laughs> what? Sorry, I was testing everything oh <laughs> doing my usual in the background as i do you yes. know well i'm what's your, I'm what's your to... busy ranting about milk i am ranting and please about don't because i've been hearing a lot of discussion about a particular show that people have been watching for some strange reason what show oh maybe. god what is it called milk milk hunter or something like that oh my gosh maybe that's connected to this guy saying telling Possibly. my intern that is possible Hmm. No, thank you. <laughs> I mean... So, not the kind of show that you'd be into. Oh, no, 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 no. But, like, it's like... If I was ten years older, I think that would be a compliment. Yeah. Or maybe if I was my age, but I had, like, three babies or something. I mean, that would be a compliment then, for sure. I think so. So I don't want to say that that's not a compliment. It's just in the area of life I'm in right now. I I just also like I'm not so old. You aren't old. Just shut up. You're not even old. I don't think so. I don't know. However, someone is going to be old soon enough. And I hope your gift shows up before your birthday. Okay. To be fair. To be Pretty fair. Bad. Audience, to be fair, this year it's my fault. <laughs> it's literally wow. sitting on my bedroom floor, just going. You, you gonna send me at any point? You gonna mail me off to Pete? So, uh, I mean, nine days. So you know, yeah, I guess. Like, nine days. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm the worst. And then next week, I'm mailing. Well, not next week, but the following week, I'm yeah. mailing Mike all of his samples. For oh sport, yes. Which hey, we'll talk about what about too. mine? <laughs> no, you know what? I'm gonna make you and me. We're gonna have we got this ones and Rap Reviews Radio ones. I think. I think I'm gonna do it. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. That's that's my thinking. My thinking. Yes. Thing. Can you make sure that mine's an extra large? This I time? will. I will. Good. Because the large was a, wasn't very flattering. The thing is, the um, company that I use, they run small, which I had to tell Mike mm. that as well. It's so like one Give me to a two. Couple I was gonna say one to two sizes bigger than you would buy off the shelf, you know. Oh yeah, send me double XL. We're well, good. We're I good. say I think they're even smaller than Premark, if I'm honest. Probably. And Premark runs I mean, small. Yes. I barely speaking, fit in that. Mm -hmm. but speaking of which, when I was in Ireland, it was really funny. <laughs> oh yeah. So we walked past this shop literally the first day that we got there and bear yeah. in mind we've been up at like three in the morning. Oh gosh. So we'd walked past it and we went, Oh well the advertising kinda of looks like Primark, but it's called Pennies. <laughs> oh, you yes. literally walk in and literally everything is Primark stuff, but like the yeah. bags, the receipt, the, the yeah. tags, everything. Yeah. And that was supposed to be a joke. Yeah. And we didn't realise it was actually true. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was weird. It was so weird. If I understand correctly, Penny's was a different brand, but like years ago, and then Primark came in and just bought them and then kept the name. Like that's that's true of so many stores. Um, well, yeah. no, you guys don't know. That doesn't surprise stores, me. Yeah, it's so weird. I've seen it a lot though from other other stores. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of one, but I can't think right off the top of my head. Oh my goodness. I really want to start drinking, but I really want to wait till we get some people in chat. Just just, just start drinking. But it's so important that I show off this glass, because Pete, do you recognize this? Just... Uh, it's crystal. It is crystal. Well, it's crystal, yes. Yes, uh, crystal. that's about as much as I know about it, and that's um, all you're getting out of me. It's the exact same glasses that Bill and Frank use. In the last of us episode. Okay. Because <laughs> apparently almost everything that's in the house is something that I own. <laughs> Basically, bougie-ish. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm in such a weird part of my life. Because... Oh, yeah. yeah, because like... You know, born East Texas, white trash. But now I can afford the finer things. But the people that I'm surrounded by, they're like, like crazy wealthy. They're like top of the food chain, toffs, and they look down on me. So it's a weird, it's a weird dichotomy. It's very strange. So much so like you got that working class stank on you. Yeah, apparently, which is fine with me. <laughs> it's like okay, whatever. <laughs> like right, this is just. Right. Wait till I start I'll be talking back in to a second. Okay. Let's check the uh, recording. One right. Sec. Roll it over, roll it over. Looks like we are not going to have any chat today. That's okay. That means I can just ramble and rant. But not that that stops me. Why does my hair look so messy tonight? It, I did it so well, so good. And I did my makeup so good. And just nope. Nope. Just the most generic white chick on the planet. <laughs> Drinking my Prosecco. <laughs> Cause I'm not bougie. Although I totally am. I just, oh, yeah, what? I have expensive taste, not expensive taste. I have a taste for the finer things. And those aren't always the most expensive things. I just like, I like the best of the best. Because I like things that last and are just good quality. Yeah. And if I can afford it, I'm going to buy it. Yeah, like I said, nothing wrong with that at all. Cool. Alright. Anyone in? Yeah. Nobody's in. Nobody's here. Oh, that's so funny you say that, Pete. Okay, so like in like the late 80s, early 90s, they had this um, this thing. It was like, a, remember answering machines? Yeah. But like, we never had one. That was only rich people stuff. <laughs> um, and you could buy this, this tape that would have like silly songs on it or impressions of movie stars saying, you know, leave your message here. What, them... you mean like you would get on The Simpsons yes, and they did exactly. that whole joke on there? Yes, exactly that. And it did say, nobody's home. <laughs> so exactly that. Oh, Nana made it in. Yay, we have a chatter chat. A chatter uh, uh, Hooray. Chat. Howdy. Boy, howdy. How, how was the Tekken thing? Don't tell me anything. I'll, I'll go watch it later. Oh, goodness. I also have something else that I need to watch later, but I'm not exactly excited to watch it. What is it? Uh, research for the next episode of the uh, Never Watchers podcast mm. that is coming tomorrow. What? What? What are you on? Uh, just gonna say, I'm not gonna say what it is. Okay. But I'm go I'm gonna say that the bad guy. Also rhymes with the main star of the uh, of the film. Okay. <laughs> um, and he's played by a certain Mr. Bale. 
Oh. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I thought you watched like I said, that. Uh, I have already watched it, oh. but that was a while back, so I need to you watch it refresh. again. Yeah. Yep. Uh, not that I particularly want to. Nope, I think you should also... Well, I was going to say drink, but you don't... You know drink. what? What? You know what? The funny thing is, I might just not watch it. And then just say that, because I'm just to say it on the episode. Yeah, but I'm probably I giving too much away for tomorrow. Can't force myself to go through that again. I might just do that. But... I mean, you know? <laughs> I mean, it I'll explains just... it. I mean, yeah. Can't force myself to watch it again. Exactly. You can't make me. What? Look, I've got other things to be watching that are so much better, even though the second series is a bit bit naff at times. Oh, goodness. Oh, speaking of... Oh. Pete? Where did you go? Oh. Wrong button. Okay, I was already there. Like, so you know the little pop-up that comes up from the bottom on Windows 10 or 11? Yeah. Uh, accidentally pressed the call, the call end button there when that came up. Stupid <laughs> thing. My I'm trying to get this called open so I could oh my get gosh. this location. My whole life flashed before my eyes. Um, it's cool. And it wasn't very long. Uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. What were we talking about? No I idea. Talking about... Oh, I was going to say, I cannot believe this. Cannot believe this. We have gone live. Guess who else has gone live? Just guess. Uh, one for the bingo card, potentially. Definitely. And so, Call Me Kevin has gone live now, and so is Krusty. So my two guys that I love to watch are live right now. Stealing our time slot. Not In our time. Yeah, exactly. And you're signing. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's one Mr. Kevin. Who hasn't done that in a very long time? I don't care. <laughs> Still happened. Yes, but at least I'll have VODs to watch tonight and tomorrow. Yes. Uh, tomorrow I have to go to battle and fight the NHS. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Sorry, what? Yeah. So I'll say this while we're waiting and then... Yeah. I guess we can start after that, but, um, yeah, so, Pete knows the person I'm talking about, but I, I take care of a, a fellow, um, who is very ill, uh, and his parents are very ill as well, so, he only has me, and the medical system, the NHS over here is, um, how you say, dicking him about, <laughs> Um, um, yes, but let's just go and stand outside during COVID and clap the NHS because they're doing a fantastic job. Oh my gosh. I'm it's, joking, by the way. It's like, yeah. I know you are. Um, but it's like, there are people, and I freely say this, I'll say this to, well, I'll be saying it tomorrow as well. There are people who do not belong in the medical field. And the person in charge of his care does not belong in the medical field. She is void of all human emotion and empathy which is great for a surgeon you know go be a surgeon <laughs> oh i get to cut people yeah that's like cool <laughs> because see i could never be a surgeon like i could get the head knowledge i can't cut into a person even if they're like knocked out and stuff <laughs> yeah uh... indeed yeah, exactly. Man. I don't want to make this too overtly political. I but, know. Uh, yes. We are in our own dystopian world at the current thing, and ah, I'm getting angry again. Rah. Oh, hello. You need to call the NHS for a doctor's appointment. Takes about 25 times. When you do finally get through, oh, am I going to see. No, you're not going to see someone today. You're going to talk to them over the freaking bone. And maybe, maybe they'll see you in a couple weeks, maybe. If you're lucky. If not, go to A and E and wait about five hours there. Yeah. No. Oh, whatever prob whatever immediate problem that I had has now been exacerbated by at least tenfold. Well done. Thanks yeah. for that. Which is what has happened with this person. Um, but we're not gonna talk about that because we have way so many other things to talk about that I need to get nice uh, and sharp. Uh, far too many things. Yeah. 
Yep, yep, Let's yep. go. Is my sound coming through okay, by Your the way? Sound? Yeah. Oh, Nana, tell us, let us know, because for me, everything sounds great. Yeah, it sounds okay to me. It's just the, the recording's obviously a little bit different because yeah, exactly. uh, I haven't quite set it up for voice me. We need to go through that at some point soon because really, new, new microphone. I've lost so much weight that this is like, this is crazy Baggy. big. Yeah. Baggy. I need to switch back to my other one. Um. Anyway, okay. yeah, we good? I, think, I think Nana's going to be it for tonight, which is fine. That's, That's fine. Good. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Cool. Right. Whatever. Whatevs. Whatevs. Um, okay, count me down. Three, two. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Rapid Reviews Radio episode 148? Question mark? Okay. Um, I'm your host, Kylie Walden, joined by my ever-present co-host, Pete Beckett. Yo. <laughs> And we have a very exciting show for you today, folks, <laughs> which we actually do. Uh, and yes, this is another Kylie Drinks on the Stream uh, episode, so if you want to... Oh, today is a day that ends in Y. <laughs> this is true. But if you want to catch that car crash, uh, you can always check us out on twitch.tv forward slash... Uh, no. Yeah, you're you're correct, but I was gonna I was gonna make one thing very clear as a disclaimer that you shouldn't actually drink and drive, so there will be no car wreck. Oh no, <laughs> that's a good point, Pete. Oh my gosh, sex. Um, yeah. Cancelled within two minutes. Oh my well goodness, done. yes. Um, oh, oh wait, a minute. New record. <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, but Twitch right, sorry, I'm calling this episode Kylie Gets Cancelled. There you go. Twitch.tv forward slash rapid reviews, right? Yes. Okay. Thank yes. You. Thank you. Um, yeah, so this is uh, going to be a combo of things. A melange, as you were. A menage a trois. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Um, but, uh, usually what I do to kick off things, it, that Prosecco is hitting fast. I haven't drank in like over a month. I didn't even drink at Christmas. Anyway. Well, you haven't so, drunk in two weeks because you drank on the last episode. Did I? Yes. I don't, oh my gosh, I did, didn't I? Okay, so two weeks it has been then. So, Pete, I'd like to start things off with asking our guest, which we don't have today, how their week's been. So it's going to be Pete this time. Pete, how's your week been? Uh, well, two weeks, because it's been two weeks oh, yes, since we recorded the last episode. Uh, it's been a bit weird, let's say. <laughs> it's, been, it's been very nice. It's been very nice. So last weekend, actually, the reason why we didn't have an episode, I was over in, in the Isle of Ireland, over in Dublin. Spending some time for for Rachel's birthday. Uh -huh, uh -huh. She turned thirty. That's a wonderful so, age. Wonderful age. Yes. So took her out for the weekend uh, on a birthday last Sunday. We just did whatever she wanted to do, and she chose to go to Dublin Zoo. Oh just yes, it's a very famous zoo. Oh, so, yeah, it was all right. So and then went back to the hotel and just potted around for a bit and then went out for a really nice dinner at probably one of the best steak restaurants I've ever oh, eaten where'd you in. Go? And it was amazing. It's a place called Fire Steakhouse and oh. oh my god, it was amazing. Yeah. Dublin do steaks right. They do. Mm. They do. 120 euros for the whole thing. It's, it was yeah. A money. yeah, it's very, very expensive in Dublin, especially restaurants. But I yeah. I've, I mean I've, everywhere else was fine actually. Like everything was moderately priced, I think. Like to some degree, mm -hmm. drinks were crazy expensive. Yeah, because I think there's about sugar tax as well. Uh, yeah, same as over here, mm -hmm. I guess. But you know, other than that, yeah, it was a good weekend. Other than uh, not getting a lot of sleep. <laughs> well, that does happen. Bloody Irish. <laughs> yeah. So other than that, uh, just been watching TV stuff and catching up on Last of Us and stuff like that. So. We'll talk we, about that in a bit. I was going to say, we'll be talking about that. So, spoilers yeah. ahoy! Um, mm. oh, so, your two weeks, how they been? How they been? Well, I'm going to, of course, tie my stuff in until we got this. But, um, 
So my two weeks have been, uh, I, I'm going to use that word, interesting. Uh, I have been a month behind in work because I got the flu, as we know, and I never mm -hmm. get sick, and that flu knocked me out for three weeks. So I'm still trying to launch the online branch of my store, which I really need to get going because I need some money. <laughs> I'm almost out of money. Um, so I launched for our listeners uh, a mini merch store. Um, under the explicit permission uh, from over Overlord Mike, um, who's quite quite pleased with it. Uh, so there is a mini merch store in beta testing right now. You can go check our Discord out for that. It's got your basics, you know, t-shirts and hoodies and mugs and stuff. Um, so mostly I've been doing that, and then. Dealing with some crazy stuff, and here's we're gonna look, we're gonna launch into. We got this right quick. We got this is a very very short segment where we like to kind of take a moment, uh, focus on mental health because that is important. Um, if you don't have your mental health, you literally don't have anything. <laughs> um, and yeah. so, some crazy stuff has come up, and that uh, I don't know if I mentioned it on the show or on the stream. But there is a gentleman that I take care of, and oh, I didn't. That was on the stream. It was on the stream. Yeah, um, and he is not doing so great, and all this kind of threw me back into this weird, like, I'm just to say PTSD thing. Where um, about eight years ago, I honestly thought my life was over, like gone, done. Put a stick of fork in me, I'm done. Because uh, was diagnosed with a autoimmune disease called I'm not gonna pronounce it right because I'm American, but uh, hydrinitis supertiva, or the American way, which is hydrinitis supertiva. Um, it's okay, a, never heard of it. Unfortunately, no, it's very. I'm gonna say rare. It's it's it is and it isn't. As in the first stage is not rare at all, but I had stage three, which is extremely rare and very gross. If you read the X-Men or have ever read the X-Men and heard of the mutant legacy virus, it was like that. <laughs> oh, okay. Or a zombie oh, like the X-Men so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was not good. The prognosis wasn't good. And I was very young. I mean, I'm still young, but I was like in my 20s, you know? And they're like, oh, your life's over. Um, take these uh, opiates for the rest of your life and just, you know, chill. <laughs> Because that's all that's going to happen. Your skin's just going to eat itself until you die. Thanks, America. Yeah. Well, that's the, this is the crazy bit. So in the middle of that, I was diagnosed in America. And I went, oh, this is not working for me. And then I decided to move here. And boom, NHS knew exactly what I had, what to do, got on top of it. Just boom, 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 boom. Um, which is why I do support the NHS uh, very strongly just hate what it's become but so all that i'm saying all of that stuff to say that there was a moment in time eight years ago where i thought i'm done life's over you know i'm, I'm out of it i'm out um and that was probably the darkest time i ever had that is where i learned to reach out for mental health um, help <laughs> professionals uh, I got immediately re uh, referred to CBT, which is what they do over here uh, in the Cognitive UK. Cognitive behavioral therapy. Yes. Now, it turns out it didn't work on me because <laughs> I'm autistic. and I But I had to go through that to find out that I was autistic. So all this kind of happened um, about the same time. CBT is very difficult for... Uh, neurodivergent individuals mostly autistics because we've, we're incredibly self-aware like too self-aware in a bad way um and cbt is about changing your thoughts um it's a wonderful thing it really is uh so i had to go the route of seeing an actual psychologist and you know was diagnosed and as autistic and everything like that but the point i'm trying to make is i could not have got through that moment in my life, if I had not reached out, there's no way. I I was in the hospital for two years. I had had eight surgeries, and some of them had failed, which is why I had so many. And I was like I said, I wasn't even 30 yet, and it was like, 
okay, well, if you're done, you know, don't, don't be looking, don't be making any plans because it's not going to happen. Um, but I did reach out and it did help me, uh, you know, get through this. And so I'm, I'm now watching a friend go through the same struggle and I'm having to go, there's help out there, you know, reach out. It doesn't yeah. have to be this way. I know it's tough. Like there's no cure for what he has. It's not going to kill him. He's just going to progressively get worse. And I'm mm-hmm. just like, I'm not leaving. I'm going to be by your side the whole way. And it's it's going to be, you know, we're going to get the help that you need. So if you're out there, all of that to say, if you're out there, and it doesn't have to be a medical thing. It could be anything like addiction or, uh, you know, even just you lost your job, you know, in this wonderful economy that we have. Uh, yeah, cause that yeah. happened to me last year. That yeah. sucked. Yeah, it did. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah, Pete. Uh, oh, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that y'all don't know, and it was just like, what? Um, luckily. yeah, the amount of times I didn't want to come on and do an episode that yeah. week, but still managed it. But still did it. And I think you were in CBT at that time, right? Not at that time, no. Uh, but no, that was another time. Oh, okay. Um, but. It's a wonderful thing out there. I do know it's harder on the U.S. people. I really do. But there, hopefully, I mean, there are free services. There are. Just reach out. I promise. I know. I know. I know. Believe me. I'm speaking from a voice of experience. I have been there, laying in bed, staring at the ceiling, going, this can't be it. This cannot be the rest of it. This is it. It just can't be it. You know. Uh, and then I... I did, it, it was a little like the end of uh, the never ending story where the childlike empress has the little grain of sand and she's like, if you keep wishing it'll grow, blah, blah, blah. But I found that little grain of sand in my head that caused me to say, I need help. And then that little grain of sand, went, whoo, you know, I'll never feel ashamed. You can do it completely anonymously. Um, you never Samaritans to, are good for that, by the Samaritans way. Samaritans are great for anonymous stuff. Uh, you never have to tell anyone. I talk about my stuff just because I want other people to go, oh, someone else has been through that. But you don't have to. No one ever. You never have to talk about what you're going through um, and stuff. So, if you're hurting at all, please, please reach out. It really will make a difference. I, I know that's tough. I know that first step is, is tough. Um, but it, 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 it will work out. I, I promise. I know that sounds so naive, but it will. Eight years ago, I couldn't have told you that I would be sitting here doing this podcast. There's no way. It was a different life. Yeah. So we're here to encourage you to do that because as always, we got this because you got this. We got this together. Yes. We have. <laughs> Um, all right, do you want to um, read chat before we move on to our spoiler? Ahoy. Uh, I, w- I would do, but we can't. No need. What? There's no chat. What? There's no chat. No, there is. Nana was talking about his week. Uh, oh, sorry. I didn't see that <laughs> come in. Uh, Nana put, I think progress is happening this week. Applied for a lot of things and actually got the next stages of review. But here's hoping. I did see that on Twitter, actually. Well done. Yeah. I am excited for you, Nana. Um, because believe me, even just getting the interview stage, that's such an accomplishment. Even if you don't get the job, it's the experience that yep. you need. Because, oh boy, do I have interview yep. experience. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. Believe you me, as someone who's done many interviews, <laughs> yes. they, 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 they get easier the more you do them. They do. Um, and there's no such thing as bad experience, because right. it's all experience. It's true, 100%. You can, have, you can have some bad moments, of course, but that's how you learn from them. Yes. I just be like me and just be like, you go yeah. in, you try to like, you try to go in, you try to be all professional and stuff, and then... Your brain just stops working, and you're like, you're like you know what? I'm just going to be honest with you. Because <laughs> that's what I do. Mm. And then I usually have them laughing by the end, and sometimes yep. I get called back. Um, uh, that's the same with me as well. I think mm-hmm. I remember one of the ones that I did. I think I told you about this. Mm-hmm. Is uh, When I was looking for a job last year, mm-hmm. um, one place phoned me back, and obviously I had to do an interview. And it was one that I wasn't particularly too fond about doing. Yeah. 
and I'd forgotten all about it. Yes, I remember you telling they, me they, this. They, they, they went, oh, uh, can you uh, tell us anything about, uh, you know, about the company? I went, no, not really, because I haven't done any research. Yeah. Sorry, I haven't had the time because I've been working. Yeah. But I didn't get a call back from them, but at least I was honest about it. You were it. honest, yep. Yep, that makes it easier on everyone. Yes, I'm not going to waste their time. Exactly. Always do research beforehand. That's, that's something to learn. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, because when they go, do you have any questions for us? You are supposed to ask at least one question. I found that out. Yes. What's the salary? <laughs> <Not always. laughs> no, don't ask that. No, uh, no. You should ask about additional benefits and stuff sure. like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like especially social stuff because it makes it look like you're more interested in integrating with teams. Oh, ooh. Yeah. I'm Pete. I know how to be a human. <laughs> no, I'm also giving you the wealth of experience from at least a hundred <laughs> interviews. Oh goodness! I yeah. I'm not sure I've had that many, but I'm pretty close. I have, I have. Hey, Nihu. Um, let's do a mild discussion on something to do with Halo because I want to discuss Halo. Oh, you want to do that first? Uh, okay. Uh, yes, just a small one because obviously the news came out about mm. the layoffs at three four three and Microsoft. We didn't mm -hmm. get a chance to discuss those in any major way because we were off at the time. Yes. So uh, I distinctly remember, I think, one or maybe both of us saying that we were particularly worried about the state of Halo and 343. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, well, definitely when Joseph Staten, Stratton, whatever his name is, left. Staten. Staten. Yeah, yeah uh, Staten, Staten, I whatever. I was like, oh. <laughs> Something's going down. It's going down with the ship. Mm-hmm. So where do you but... think Halo sits at the moment? Okay, I have I have some thoughts on this. Um, I know that's why I brought it up. The resident yeah. Halo expert. So I'm going to discuss something else quickly. <laughs> I have never been a fan, as we know. Now I'm not against it, but I've never been the biggest fan of Halo's uh, like multiplayer, like not co-op, but the the verses and the, the battle online. pass, the online. I've never been a fan of their battle pass. I've said it before. I don't particularly like their cosmetics, um, which is, you know, not, not the biggest deal in Halo. Um, some of the gameplay was okay. Uh, I did enjoy Halo Infinite's story, but when they released the story, they said they were going to make it a 10-year live service game. And they were going to expand on it and everything like that. So I enjoyed the story with the idea that there was more to come. Yeah. And then more never came. Is what she said. More doesn't look like it's going to come. It's either. definitely not. Because the last thing I read, and I am 100% behind this, they're doing a complete teardown and they're going to reboot it from the ground up. And use the Unreal Engine, which they should have done anyway. Uh, rumors. That's nothing but rumors. And I think most of those have been pretty much defunct i i don't know because i'll tell you right now anything coming out of microsoft right now is very difficult to prove or disprove because of their insane i cannot believe it's happening battles with the sec and all the other stuff so they have to guard their cards very close to the chest uh because yeah. sony is pouncing looking yeah and i know this isn't supposed to be a discussion about that but WTF, this was supposed to be just such a slam dunk. I don't know what has happened and where any of this is coming from. Uh, it's a bit all over the place. It is. It really is. Um, but And we won't get into that now because I do think that's a future show. Oh, it will be. Don't yeah. you worry about that. There's I want to discuss all that when yeah. it goes, when it starts to get more towards the point. But if they can totally strip halo back and start it back from the ground up as in what it should have been um i think it'll be okay halo is such a strong franchise uh i'm hoping they'll learn from their mistakes um but there's a lot of fangirl in me as well they just need to strip it back to be halo halo master chief <laughs> arbiter and Cortana in her super revealing outfit, because that's how it's always been. Why we gotta change that formula, I don't know. It could be a buddy cop. You know, not episode, but game going forward. 
Arbiter yeah. and the Chief. Arby and the Chief, like the old days. <laughs> and, uh, so, I don't know. Fingers crossed that that happens. I'm actually hopeful, but I do realize that I'm very much an optimist. So, it could just be, again, naivete on my part. But mm -hmm. I'm going to always want the best for Halo. That is... That's just my, you know, Halo and Fallout. That's that's my two. Yeah. That's fair enough. I can respect your optimism. However, <laughs> welcome to welcome to the land of pessimism. I think Halo is on the shelf for a while now. Uh, I do think. Now I will agree with you there, Pete. I do think they were gonna shelf it, shelf, shelf it, shelf it, shelf it. Uh, for a while. Not. I don't think they're gonna do it too long. Like I wouldn't see it longer than five years. But no, I do. I could I see actually it, do. I could see it up to five years. Yes. I could. Uh, I don't. I could see it being a lot longer than that. Well, fingers crossed that it isn't. Um, no, of course. I, I think Halo is such a massive franchise. I don't want it to happen. It's just too good. It it it's a flagship, you know, uh, franchise. That's not the word I was looking for, but. Well, it's yeah. a flagship product. Product. That's. Right. Um, Prosecco's really hitting me. Um, but, uh, so, it's like, that is a legacy there, you know? It would be like mm. getting rid of Sonic forever. Um, and, you know, yeah. you're just never going to do that. I don't think so, but, I, I mean, I kind of want them to, if I'm honest, because I think uh, at this point they've sort of just burnt themselves out on trying to work on Halo. I think give 343 a bit of time to create something new and then maybe that those ideas could then start to bleed into well, the new halo i mean definitely i think here's what i hope that uh publishers game publishers are learning what um you know the tv series and movies are learning which is just stick to the original formula <laughs> you don't have to do anything new with with already existing products now yes you should come up with new ips that's great yeah of course but don't like the halo tv series w2tf what were they trying to do with that they weren't going to get new fans because it was terribly written and they yeah. pissed off all the old fans <laughs> and then yep that makes you not want... It's a commercial for your game, and they just... Uh, yeah, and then you've got the people right in the dead center, like me, who was like, oh, I know of Halo. I haven't played too many of them. I could watch a series. Oh, wait, this is awful. It's awful. That makes me think the game is awful. You know, people are like that. Yeah, I, I knew that Halo has its has its high moments and its low moments. That's about it. Halo is one of the only games... And it has I... Halo 5 Guardians. Gosh, let's I know that's why I didn't want to include that as a low point. <sighs> but I will say this: Halo. I do not cry. I'm not a crier. Although we're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. Um, <laughs> I'm not a crier. <laughs> um, but Halo, Final Fan Halo Three, Final Fantasy Seven, and Red Dead Redemption Two. I've cried in all three of those. That okay. is some good storytelling. So oh, yes, don't I mean, mess with it. No. Uh, right, I guess we better get on with it because you've now set us the task of ma making sure that we have to discuss The Last of Us every episode now. Uh -huh. Thanks for that. We are now a Last of Us TV show fan cast. <laughs> but I want to say, I told Pete this, but I want to say this for our viewers at home because our listeners can't see. But I'm actually drinking from the same uh, wine goblets that uh, Bill and Frank use in episode three of The Last of Us. But we're not right, talking about episode three okay. just yet. Well, no, we are because I haven't got a lot to say about it. Do you don't want to talk about two? Oh, I think okay. I've got a lot more to discuss about two, which is why I think I want to discuss three first. Oh, okay. I will let you steer this ship. Okay. Okay. So, talking about episode three, there's only one reason why I'm not going to discuss too much about this. Okay. Because I think it's brilliant and it doesn't need much of a discussion. It's amazing. There's two pieces of television out right now that I think are beautifully written. And that is the death episode of Sandman. Even if you don't like Sandman, the death episode is a standalone, very well written, very well acted. Uh -huh. And um, an episode three of The Last of Us, and it made me cry like a baby. 
Uh, I wouldn't say like a baby, but yes, I did. Cr oh, yeah. I did shed tears. It was, yeah. it was bad. Yep. <laughs> it was like so. It's yeah. beautiful. It is a beautiful um, piece of art. Oh, it is. But I have uh, mild criticism. Sure. Uh, not of the not of uh, the Bill story at all, because mm -hmm. I think I think that is Bill and Frank is just. Brilliant. I actually have mild Brilliant. criticism Brilliantly too. Done. Yeah, oh, it was perfect. Um, it was perfect. It was brilliantly done. I loved like the whole thing, but like the whole storyline between them. It's, I know it's kind of changed from the game a little bit. It's changed a lot, but in like a great way. Yeah, that's uh, what I've been hearing. Obviously, as someone just... who's not played the game. Yeah, I will tell you that there is none of that in the game. So don't play the game thinking you're going to get a Bill and Frank side no. story. Oh, okay. so beautiful, so beautiful. But anyway, I do yeah. have a criticism as well, and I do wonder if it's going to be the same, but go ahead. Um, yes, it's the fact that Joel doesn't really still feel like Joel. It's, and we are on the yeah. freaking same page. This never happens, people. <laughs> no, um, so it's strange because take the Joel and Ellie story out of the bookends this entire episode doesn't mm -hmm. need to be there I don't think it should be focused on at all I think it should just solely be I think that was just for information uh, Bill That's really and Frank story oh it should be it is it's to tie everything up it's like mm -hmm. yeah we so that you go to this house and you know who's there basically and that's or yeah. who's been there and that's about it um firstly why why is Joel still acting a bit weird? Like, he's yeah. not acting like his game counterpart in any way. Why does he sort of... Like, he knows how dangerous this world is, and he knows, obviously, what's happened with Tess. Like, why is he allowing Ellie to sort of go off on her own? Or, oh, you can... So, what was the line? Oh, you, you do what you want, sort yeah. of thing. Not, that was a bit odd. Also, excellent uh, per, like person who knows how to forage and knows how to, mm -hmm. you know... Uh, turn over a, an entire house but yet doesn't find this hatch in the middle of a floor yeah. yeah odd sorry not not great i'm i'm again i'm gonna agree with pete my first thought was are they setting up something in the future because this is not joel as i it's know not. him um, it's definitely from what i know about it, it's definitely not joel he's like there's yeah, no... he sort of doesn't want to be this sort of protector, but he sort of say, gets forced upon him and has to do it. Right now, uh, this is right now, it could all change. Um, mm -hmm. two, I'm going to make two points. I won't touch on uh, episode two just yet. I'll let Pete do that. But Tess struck me as way more Joel like from the game. She's not like Tess from the game, she's more like Joel. No, that's kind of what I want to talk about with episode yeah. 2. Yeah. And this is not, I don't think this is against Pedro Pascal. I'm not sure. It's not not a joke. Clicking because, you know, they're called clickers. Uh, it's not clicking yet. He doesn't seem to have a fatherly instinct, whereas Joel no. did. You know? Agreed, yeah. There's, 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 the there's none of that maternal instinct whatsoever, even if it is, like, a surrogate daughter. Right. Um... I do love, absolutely love and adore Ellie, uh, because although I saw myself as Frank in the uh, Frank and Bill part, because there's this part where Frank's like, I want to rebuild uh, the boutique, and I want to rebuild yeah. it, and I was like, oh, that's me in Fallout, oh my gosh, um, so <laughs> I totally identify with Frank there, but I'm not going to lie, Bella is me as a mouthy 14-year-old. I hated the world. I was very emo. I was very angry at the time. Didn't know I was autistic. Found that out later. That's why I was so angry. Mm. So I was very, like, sarcastic and bitter to adults. I couldn't stand them. I got called a B word and a little S-H-I-T word uh, <laughs> all the time. Um, I didn't mellow out until I was probably 19. Um, 18 or 19. But uh, So for me, I like the characterization just because I can see myself in her. She is a little brat. She's 100% a brat. I don't think you're supposed to like her. I think something's going to flip uh, later. Um, I'm, but I am concerned that I'm not seeing a lot of Joel from the game. No. I'm starting to feel like he's going to be massively going to be a passenger in this entire he's story. 
feeling very one dimensional. Very. Yeah, because Tess had a lot more of the qualities of Joel from the game, and even Ellie has a few few of those qualities uh -huh. as well, rather than Joel himself. Yeah. And it's weird. It's all. It's all. It's almost like this was the story that Druckmann really wanted to tell with Joel originally. I don't know, or it's this crazy idea because he's not the only sole writer of the first Last of Us. It's he's now not. more of his influence. I was going to bring that up. I'm glad you brought it up. I'm going to keep bringing that up too. Druckmann is not the sole writer of the original game, but he is the sole like contributor. Creative, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to this, he's not the writer on, on the show. So I. Well, he directed episode two. Yeah, but I'm saying, you know, he's. He's got input and influence. He's got more mm -hmm. input and in, in influence in the TV show than he did on the original game. Uh, yeah. But having said that, I'm going to agree with Pete on this, and then we can talk about episode two if you want, but there's something lacking in Joel. I don't know if this is going to be a character arc later. Hopefully, mm -hmm. fingers crossed. Or if it's Pedro Pascal is just kind of walking through it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I hope not. I hope I'll not. be honest. I think it is Pedro just walking through it. He's very, very, like, tell, like phoning it in. I, But he's such a good actor, I don't know what's going on, so I'm just, I'm kind of watch and see. Watch and see. Yeah, like like I've always said to you, I've never rated him much yeah, as an you've actor. Never, I think he's yeah. that much. I'm still not even sold on this, to be uh -huh. fair. It's the first performance I've seen of Bella Ramsey as well, and I'm not even sold still. Oh, right, still see, I, I, I absolutely love her. Yeah, I know, Game of Thrones. Yeah, she's so amazing in that. Yeah, uh, I'm not sold at all. I can't. I still can't see Ellie in her at all. Like, it's still not quite acting for the same as what I've seen before. Yeah, no, it's definitely a different Ellie. Whereas the Ellie from the game is very vulnerable, very. Um... Yeah, but I like that characterization from no, the I, game. That's the difference. Is that I do too. He's not seen any of this world, but yet this Ellie seems to have know about the world yet has never seen it. Um, to some extent, I will say that. Here's what I'm thinking. Let's see predictions. That all of this, because I know, again, for me as a mouthy 14-year-old who was angry at the world, that was all a front. I was very broken and vulnerable behind all that. So what I'm hoping, because next episode is an episode that is not tied to the game. So that's going to be new for even me. Um, okay. Yeah, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. Um, is to see if, Maybe she cracks, and we get to see a little bit of vulnerability in her. I would love to see some freaking vulnerability in Joel. Just make him human. Give him some fatherly yeah. anything, <laughs> you know, because yeah. it's not there. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. But, anyway, we've gone on well too long of what I've actually thought we were going to do. But <laughs> I enough. can't help. I was so passionate about it. It was such a no, good episode. No, I was too. It was very good. I was very happy with it as an episode until uh -huh. the book ending of Joel and Ellie, and it was like, this isn't needed. I, I hope that uh, I hope they are nominated uh, for all the awards oh, for the. I the think I think Park. this episode in particular is the is oh. the uh, is the Oscar bait as they call it. You know. Can I just say this one thing? And I am tying it back to video games. That's all, I promise. I promise. <laughs> but the thing that I mostly love uh, about the Bill and Frank story is. They're in dystopian, uh, post-apocalyptic future. That is only a backdrop. It's it's kind of like why I love Fallout. Well, specifically, I've modded Fallout 4 so that I can go into towns and into Sanctuary and I can rebuild it to the mm -hmm. pristine, to the way it was. Not rebuild it with, you know, you know cars or whatever. You know, we're... Rusted metal and all. No, I have it where you can just go out, get your resources, and rebuild it to this pristine state. Mm -hmm. There's something beautiful to me about the contrast of this horrible post apocalyptic destruction of society uh, compared to just living a normal life. Because that's what humans do. We just adapt and we just chill. Even if it's like. Yeah post-apocalyptic we just live a normal life because we're humans i we love try, that yeah. i love that but pete did you want to say anything about episode two uh move on. to a degree yes yeah, you go for, it. Go like, for it um i think most of what applied to episode one which we had that discussion a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. applies to episode two 
uh, the set design, the scenery, the oh, yeah. uh, characterization of of dystopian Boston is fantastically Absolutely. well done. Like, give all credits to that. It's mm-hmm. well, it's well shot. It's well paced. It's well edited. Again, CGI you know, is uh, great. Uh, it is, yes. It's, um, it's basically what I wanted out of the show from The Last of Us. Is it to be as tight as the game was, kind mm-hmm. of, and you know. Some mischaracterizations aside that we've obviously discussed with Joel in episode, uh, with the episode three discussions obviously apply as mm-hmm. much in the second episode as they do the third. Um, I thought Tess's, um, sorry, spoilers obviously if you're listening, um, uh, when she, she dies, mm-hmm. it's really well done, very it's well acted, so very well like, powerful. Yes. Um, uh, I I heard some discourse on uh, another Discord mm-hmm. uh, talking about how when she did part uh, did die and uh, one of the clickers came up to it. I think yeah. it was one of the clickers. It, yeah, someone said that it felt a bit of you know. I'm not going to say the word itself. We're a family friendly show here. God damn it. Uh, I'm trying to assume what you're. I can't pick up what uh, word you're. Uh, it begins with R and possibly rhymes with grapes. Oh, oh no! I mean, oh, you know that's a person's. I could perception, see it. Char- I could kind of see it characterized. I can kind of see that. I but, don't. I, I just think but, it's a horror trope for sure. See, no, it's 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 a hundred percent. That is a callback to the beginning part of the episode where she says they're all connected. Yeah, I know. I know. And that's what. No, I know. You know. I'm talking about for for other people that might be listening or this person um, that uh because they're all connected that's why when they're all running in they don't immediately attack her because they know she's she's got the mycenium or whatever it is uh the fungus oh uh, what is it called um yeah i can't remember oh why am i blanking on it i can't remember uh because it's a made-up way. word <laughs> it's mixed up with two actual words yeah um is. but uh, they sense that in her, which is why they don't go for her initially. So it's oh, okay. not actually, it's more a Borg situation. Yeah. An assimilation situation than it is the yeah. other. But yeah, I yeah. get, like, everyone's valid. Everyone's opinion is valid, and, and, and that is mm. valid as well. But I would say that, no, I, I actually can tell what the writers were doing. It was a yeah, callback. I, I definitely can as well. Yeah, they're all connected and all that stuff. Yeah, but I mean, they did it so well. They did. They I, did. Yeah. Oh. I mean, you could uh, obviously they didn't diverge, diverge too far from the game with the fact that she, nope, she they dies did. obviously mm-hmm. quite early on. Yeah, I thought they handled it well. And as I said earlier, the characteriz- characterization of Tess in this mm. is wow. Like I never liked Tess in the game. In fact, I was very like against her. Because she was very against Ellie. She didn't want her around. She didn't want to yep. have to lug her around. When she found out that she had been bitten, she was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> this oh, hell is no. not. Yeah, exactly. This ain't happening. This test is like, <laughs> this is terrible, but why couldn't they lose Joel and just use Tess? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> which I know would defeat the whole purpose of the, the show being based on the game, but it was it was great. It was a great acted. Great characterization and very strong written character, which I loved. So yeah, uh, yes, this is definitely more of an example of Pedro Pascal sleepwalking for a role for me in this episode. <sighs> yeah, I'm afraid that I'm 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 starting to lean toward more of Pete's opinion on that, but I'm going to hold out. We'll watch this next yeah. one and see I'm, if there's a I'm character. I'm holding out. I am holding out hope, and we haven't got too long to wait because as we record, it is tonight. <laughs> it's so. true. It's true. So we would have seen it by the time this episode comes out in audio. So you yeah. know, I will for sure. <laughs> I so will check, too. Check, check back next week for our regular check-in of, of, <laughs> of the Last of Us fan cast. Uh huh. It won't be this long next time. No, it probably won't because we had two episodes to cover. I guess it's true. Exactly. I mean, exactly. we dedicated a whole bloody episode like to the first uh-huh. episode. So you know. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I will say this, I said it last week, well, two weeks ago, but it mm. just feels so refreshing to have a show that is well written again and well filmed and well acted. I have missed yep. that so much. But anyway, yeah. Pete, 
let us know what direction we're going in now as I drink uh, half a bottle. Well, of I was well, I was going to say that we'll have that discussion about the PS1, PS2, PS3 uh -huh. game coming to Steam, but we've gone on too long. Can't discuss that now. Yeah, I know. And plus, it's probably a rumor. Although, I was it's very excited because it's a good rumor. It's something that I, two years ago, stated was going to happen. You did. And it possibly might, but it's still only a it's rumor. Fairly possible it might, but we've we've gone on too long, and I've had to shorten the news section as is anyway because of, uh, <laughs> because of the bloody fault. discussion of Last of Us. Because you, now you've made us a fan cast. I never <laughs> wanted that. Thanks. <laughs> it's only a couple more episodes. Uh... <laughs> it's all right. We've only got five more, ep six more episodes of it. Yep. <laughs> But anyway, anyway. I, I will state this for the record. Now, I may change my mind on this, but I am not watching season two. You can kiss my booty. I will. <laughs> you I'll watch take it. That you bullet. take. I was going to say, you take I'll that. I'll take that bullet Because I am not, um, unless some miracle happens. But anyway, Pete, yeah. what are we talking about today with our few minutes what? left? We are talking about news. We're doing news and good stuff because we've got one one that's related to possible TV, mm -hmm. one that's related to a lot of cancellations, and one that's related to an ongoing problem. Oh dear. So let's start with because we've been talking about TV interconnected universes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just going to read the headline as it comes from VGC. Amazon reportedly wants to turn Tomb Raider into a Marvel-like franchise. Sorry, let me just tell you a little problem here, Amazon. Mm -hmm. The Tomb Raider games have Lara Croft. That's about it. Yup. Uh, Pete is not wrong about that. I do like... Anyway, let's, let's, let's read this story oh, before okay, we okay. comment. Let's actually give them a reason yeah, to right. know what's going on. Uh, Amazon reportedly aspires to turn Tomb Raider into a Marvel-like franchise spanning interconnected game, film, and TV releases. Uh, in December, Amazon Games announced that it will publish the next Tomb Raider game. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, Amazon is now bankrolling a new Tomb Raider film and TV show, with the latter being written by Fleabag Emmy Award winner Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Who is a good writer. I mean, has uh, she written Adventure? No? No, She's I've not seen comedian. Fleabag. I've not seen Killing Eve. But let me just ask you now. Right? Uh -huh. Okay, so she might be a good comedian. She is a good comedian, Ren, yes. Uh, okay. When was the last time you knew a uh, Tomb Raider game to be particularly humorous? Well, here's what I'm hoping. Especially if they reference Marvel. Um, we know I've stated on the show and I have stated it when we've had a, uh, Laura Croft expert on the show, uh, and I state it now. Um, the original Laura Croft, amazing. Love her. Holy crap. Yes. Crystal Dynamics, Laura Croft, she can go jump in the ocean and swim away. Because... I'm pretty sure she did and nearly got, uh, yeah, they got <laughs> dragged sure. back up to land and a few times. That is one of the weakest written video game characters not to say female, I mean in general, uh, that there has ever been. So if they want to do a kind of tongue-in-cheek, slightly sassy, the way she was originally written, I can get on board with that. Give me a strong, yeah, a... sassy female. Okay, it's because uh, Nana write. mentioned that. Mm, yeah, okay. she does mention that in the chat. It says, oh, to be yeah. fair, Laura is kind of witty in the older Tomb Raider game. Yes. She is, but I meant humorous. Like, funny. Like, not particularly... It's more sarcastic, witty responses yeah. rather than actually being outright funny. Put it this way, Pete. You'll love this. If they try to make Laura Croft into Thor, Love and Thunder, they can also go jump in the ocean and swim. Uh, don't you mean <laughs> Thor, Love and Blunder? Yes, uh -huh. that's exactly what I mean. Um, that is that steaming pile of trash. Uh, if, if they try to do that with Laura Croft, it won't work. But if they, if they do try to do a kind of witty, you know, British, you know, kind of arrogant, sassy. I say sassy as an American, but she's arrogant. Uh, you know, rich, adventurous girl. She's, mm -hmm. she's a British um, Indiana Jones, you know. She's up her own arse in the best way. Oh, I love her. Oh, <laughs> if they do that, they're going to have a great 
uh, series, movie, everything. If they try to do crystal dynamics, I had a sexual assault and now I'm a really strong character, but I also cried when I killed someone. Blah blah. No. Uh, but I then just... I'm going to go through the rest of the game killing everyone on this island. Yeah, without crying and stuff. No, I'm I'm already over it before it even begins. Yeah. Yes. Uh, anyway, a source said to be familiar with the company's plans claimed Tomb Raider was one of the biggest, uh, was one of the largest commitments at Amazon. Oh, wait. Than right where no. it of power. Uh, use spoilers. Sorry. I was, trying, I was trying to get my way through that sentence. <laughs> After its invest investment in its Lord of the Rings TV show, The Rings of Power. Oh, gosh. Which, look. I hung on as long as I could. Amazon really does good gone stuff. Gone on long enough. Amazon does the boys. And I love, Pete does not like the boys, but I it freaking sucks. love the boys. Love it, love it, well, love it. You, you and 99% of the population. I do. Um, and I don't usually like mainstream stuff. I'm all over it. I am all freaking over it. Um, Overrated. But Rings of Power, I did hang on as long as I could. But, as I said, there were no pretty boys, which, except for Sauron, which is the bad guy, which you have to have a series with pretty boys. I'm sorry, you mm. just do. Not just for women. There are men who like pretty boys. So, you know. <laughs> and that's where, if I had to give my whole reason why Rings of Power failed, that's why it failed. <laughs> All right, yes. Uh, I've had enough of reading that story. There's not too much other information in there. It's boring. We've already gone on long enough, and I can't be bothered to listen to you going on tangents about crap. <laughs> okay, next up. I uh, can't hear you, sorry. Oh, next up. What's next? Uh, yes. Too disappointing news to all mm -hmm. that might have been interested, because actually, I want a bit of a, I'm going to take this on a bit of an aside, because mm -hmm. you're allowed one. You've had a many. I'm allowed <laughs> one. Many. Yes. Uh, the Xbox D, uh, the Xbox Developer Direct. Did mm. you watch it? I didn't. I didn't. I was. Angry. Do you actually do any homework for this goddamn <laughs> podcast? I read headlines, Pete. That's what I do. But it made me mad, so I didn't watch it. And you know why it made me mad? No Starfield news. Yeah, we knew that anyway. Yeah, I know. That's why I didn't watch I it. it. I was surprised, very, very pleasantly surprised about the high rush. But go ahead. Uh, Nana put, I watched it. It sucked. I mean, nihilistic as usual. I can respect it. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I thought it was reasonably good because I didn't watch it live and I got to watch it in uh, 4K. Uh, mm -mm. 4K no, literally means nothing to my eyes. My eyes can't see 4K. I've decided. Uh, yeah, it was annoying that we didn't get Starfield, of course, but yeah. we already knew that going in. I know. Um, but I was hoping uh, that would be the surprise, not High Rush. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, yeah, I started playing it this evening before we started podding. Yeah, I heard it's really, really good. I really like it. That's good. Uh, I've also it, Annoyingly, it's also stopping me from playing Dead Space Remake. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. I do want to play that. Yes, thanks, Kurt, for that, by the way. Mm -hmm. I need to play it. Oh, goodness. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, Hi-Fi Ru uh, Hi Rush is absolutely banging, pun intended. <laughs> um, Very good. Uh, Forza looked really, 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 really good, but annoying that it's only got a 2023 release date. Yeah. Um, what else was there? Yeah, there it was, was a couple of things. Oh, it's My Minecraft uh, Legends, was it? Yeah. Not my kind of game. I think no. it looks pretty. Yeah. I think it looks really nice, actually, and looks quite fun, but yeah, not for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, ESI Online stuff, not for me. Uh, which then comes on to the topic for today's news story, which would be Redfall. Yes. See how my side actually ties into, into stuff? Yes, it's almost <laughs> like you did it on purpose. <laughs> Uh, because coming from VGC again, the headline is, Redfall will require an online connection. Even in single player, Bethesda confirms. Yep. Oh, that has been an absolute debate all week. Uh, 
because the reason why I brought this up because actually Redfall was my highlight of that entire developer direct. I thought you, it was fantastic. You've been looking very forward to that for a while now. Yeah. Yeah. Now not playing it because of this horse crap. This is stupid. This is so dumb. But anyway, I must get onto the story before I get too annoyed about it. <laughs> So, uh, Redfall will require players to be permanently connected online, even when uh, even when playing in single player. Bethesda has confirmed the requirement is confirmed in the game's newly published uh, official FAQ, which states that while players will be able to play solo without an Xbox Live subscription, they will still need to be online to do so. Under the question, will Redfall uh, will play Redfall require an online connection for single player as well as co-op? The FAQ states. A persistent online connection is required for single player and co-op. It also states that a Bethesda. Oh, for God, I didn't even know about it. A Bethesda.net account will be required to play the game. Yeah. Ugh, Bethesda, you suck. <laughs> I still love them. Uh, while many mo modern games include DRM, which requires a one-off online check-in to prevent privacy. Oh, piracy, sorry. Privacy as well. <laughs> Probably yeah. should. Uh, a persistent online requirement remains relatively uncommon for modern games with single-player modes, even in titles that are primarily cult-focused and have single-player elements. Recent cult titles, such as uh, Gotham Knights, Monster, Monster Hunter Rise, and Marvel's Avengers, all allow for offline play in single-player mode. Meanwhile, it's ta uh, It Takes Two, which can only be played with two player, allows for offline play during local couch corp. Yep. Um... This is also a very interesting point to, to note that when it was originally released in 2021, Back for Blood required an online connection, mm -hmm. even when playing solo. And that was bloody annoying, too. Yeah. It is. Uh, however, they did remove that requirement in a, yeah. in a later update. They're they're going to keep pushing it till it happens. Um, I am a Bethesda Microsoft fangirl, as we all know, Xbox fangirl, uh, through and through. But this is something I've been against for many, 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 many years. Uh, I think E3 2017, 2016, whenever a PS4 came out. And they were like, oh, always online, that kind of thing. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> absolutely not and then xbox was like oh marketing opportunity and was like you don't have to always be online to play xbox expo um and then over the past like however many years it's been five six years all that's just gone by the wayside and everybody's like oh always on you have to be always on i can't support that i'm never going to support that because i'm always going to be on the consumer side um, there are people out there who don't have an internet connection. I mean, I've brought it up before. There's military people, of course. But there's also people who just can't afford it, who live in rural areas. Um, where I used to live out in Texas, there's no way it would have maintained, at the time, uh, a, a connection on, on something like Xbox. Oh, when I tried to play uh, Halo, holy crap, if I didn't have every single thing turned off in my house, I couldn't get in on the multiplayer. And it would lag no. like, so bad. <laughs> it was the worst. I, mean, I remember back in 360 days, it was even laggy for me, even if I didn't have anything else on there. Yeah. It was just slow. Yeah. There's slow people, internet. There's people that still have that in rural areas. Um, there's parts of here in Ireland, uh, the whole island, that are, have no internet. Like, that's insane I mean, to me. I right just thought that road. was a joke that Ed B. Punk used to tell. <laughs> no, literally literally i go right up the road there's no internet none and it's like what i'm like so it's, just, so it's essentially that south park episode then uh-huh uh-huh like, yeah, scrap of internet. i was gonna say with less um randy output but um... <laughs> don't because i will bring up that meme i know i know but uh yeah so Again, I'm always going to be on the side of consumer. Always will be. Uh, I will side with the consumer over any Bethesda product, any Xbox product. Um, and this is just not, this is not cool. It's not on. It's not cool. Don't do this. Don't do this. Yeah. I still just, 
can't really understand why a single player game needs an online connection. It really makes no sense to me. And if you claim that it's about cheating, it's not about no, cheating. Because we know it has no effect whatsoever. No, it's it's marketing. It's because they want to scrape that data. Because that mm, helps of them. They do. Yeah. I mean think Good old about analytics. It. I'm about to be I'm gonna be a conspiracy theorist right now. But think about it. Microsoft just invested a couple of billion in chat GPT is an AI uh, yep. for the people out there who don't know. Um, if they take all of the data that they're scraping from these online experiences or whatever, they're going to take that and build a game using AI as the developer. They absolutely will. I mean, let's be honest. I love Halo 3. I think it's a near perfect game. Halo 3 was built by a committee in that they subjected Halo 3 to every uh committee there was like they would get fans in they would get people off the street in they would get writers in and they would rehash what's good about it and then they would change the game and they would develop it and it became a different product in the end all based on people's input so they've already got this concept of doing stuff like that so they're gonna do that with this chat gpd gpt the best way to do that is to watch online solo players and gather information and data for their gaming habits, what games they play, how long they play, you know, what uh, routes they take, and blah, blah, blah. Routes in the game, I mean. So for mm. me, that's what this is. Uh, I admit it can be a little uh, conspiracy theorist, but also, duh, just look at the data. <laughs> it's like, that's exactly what they're doing. There is no other reason to be on uh, to have it online only for single player games. There's just no reason, and I'm never gonna support it. No, I am not either. Luckily enough, this is on Game Pass, I guess. So I haven't got to pay money for it if I want to at least try it. Just still, the idea of having an online check-in for an offline game that I was probably not likely to play with anyone because I guarantee that you're not likely to want to play it anyway because you said it looked like crap the first time. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've changed a tiny bit. A tiny. It does look better. But you know, if it's on, if it's on um, Game Pass, you know, we'll give it a whirl. But. Yeah, that's basically what I'll do. Yeah. Still, the online check-in is enough a reason for me to go. Shall I, though? I'm very disappointed in that. I am just never going to... I keep repeating myself here, but I'm never going to support it. I'm just not. I don't see any... You literally cannot give me benefits for online check-in for solo games. That's like DRM. Remember DRM? <laughs> yes, I do remember uh, DRM. I do remember DRM. And Battle.net... And having to check into that whenever I played 2142. Um, I think it was Battle.net. Yep. Whatever their version of Battle.net was at the time. I think it was Or Unet or what? whatever. You... Uh, what? Uh, when you wanted to play Battlefield, that would be yeah. EA Play. That. You had to check it every time you signed in. Now, it, know, it, it was an online game for people who don't know. It wasn't a solo game. It was 100% you needed to be online for it. But the fact that I had to, even before I could run it, I had to do all these checks. And it's just yep. like, I just, I just, no. Why? I'm a consumer. I paid money for this. Don't do this to me. I'm not a criminal. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like Denuvo being added as an anti-cheat software to PC oh. games. It's just an absolute pointless waste of time. You know, here's the thing. And I think Destiny's a good example of this, and then we'll, we'll quickly move on. Anti-cheating. Yeah, because the last story has got four yeah. stories to it. <laughs> Anti-cheating should be handled on the other end, not on the user slash client side. That should absolutely be on the other end. And that's just me from a developer point of view. Anti-cheating software is not our responsibility. Thank you very much. Destiny does it really well. Anyway, Pete, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm not reading anything more of this before I get annoyed <laughs> about it again. Okay. So let's talk live service games. Yes. Uh, yes. Speaking of Destiny. Speaking of really. Destiny. <laughs> not really, but I want to just get your take generally on live service games. Like, now, obviously, Sony are making quite a lot of them uh, coming up. And a lot of them have been cancelled as well. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, someone said 
Spoiler yeah. alert, that might be what we're covering. I was going to say, someone on Twitter today said, uh, the era of live service games are over. I'm going to let Pete read the story because I'm just going to keep spoiling everything. <laughs> now, as we go into this, you should see Pete's face. Um, but as we go into this, I am a very pro live service game person. Um, you know, I'm not particularly live exactly. service. I, I like to base kind of with Glee. Yeah, <laughs> I I am. So I'm pro. I don't want all my games to be live service, but I am pro live service. Like I do enjoy them very much. But Pete, yes, yeah. continue on with the story. Okay, so the story that contains four stories in it. So bear with. This might take a while. Uh. Buckle up. <laughs> uh, Xbox Shooter Crossfire X Yes, this has a theme by the way It's being shut down, including its single player mode mm -hmm. So I'm just going to read this And then move on to the next part of the story Because yeah. it all starts to make sense Don't let me talk So Smilegate and Remedy's Xbox Shooter Crossfire X Will be shutting down both its multiplayer and single player modes On May the 18th uh, Immediate uh, Active What? Active immediately sales on this Xbox store have been halted. Wow, okay. Uh, and there will be no new content added to the game. Purchases made within the last 14 days will be eligible for a refund. Okay, well, that's pretty good, I guess. I mean, consumer-wise, uh, yeah. But... Rushes to go and buy the game just to get a refund. Uh, why? <laughs> why not? <laughs> Regame. Uh -huh. It's true. Yes, that they're shutting it might, down. I won't, I won't be able to play it. <laughs> I was say. Free game. Free game for a couple of months. That's okay. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Try to take positives out of the situation, please. Oh, goodness. Uh, according to an FAQ, it's not just Crossfire X. It's multiplayer servers that will be in it, uh, inex inaccessible. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fine. Uh, after May 18th, game owners won't be able to play the single player campaigns either. Oh, dear. So what happens if you didn't buy this game fourteen like more than fourteen days ago? Do you get a refund? Do you get anything? Nope, you shoot out you of don't. luck. That's a good no, point, sh Pete. Nope, you shoot out of luck. If you support this game from the very beginning. Oh tough. my gosh. Pete, that's a very good point. oh my gosh. Again, completely yes. anti consumer. Anyway. Anyway, this is a quote. So, uh, if you have previously purchased, if you have previously purchased either of the single player campaign uh, campaigns, then you'll be able to enjoy and complete them until the servers close on May 18th at double uh, double UTC. So that's uh, 12 a.m. UTC, which I didn't actually know was Universal Time. Yeah, I only know that because that's the time on uh, boxes when you're developing. So. Yeah, I didn't know that data sets and all that crap. Uh, anyway, I am not going to go into this guff because this is guff about the game itself. So. Guff about guff. I'm going to move very quickly on to uh, the next culling, as we say. <laughs> uh, which is a life service game. Hmm. Themes. Mm -hmm. uh, life service game. Knockout City is closing down in June. So uh, Valerian Studios has announced that uh, plans to close its life service game and Knockout City in June. Uh, the cross-platform dodgeball game, this actually did look very good, to be fair, and never got around to playing yeah. it because live service. Yeah, although I think um, we did talk about playing it once. Yeah, we kind of did, like but we, we did. never got around to it. Yeah. We never got around to it, unfortunately. I thought it looked kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so it was released in May 2021 under the EA Originals platform label before right. uh, yeah. Velen, uh, which also developed Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, took over publishing duties and made it free to play last year. And uh, launching on February 28th, season nine of Knockout City will kick off with the release of the game's final plan update. It's the final countdown. So so all real world, uh, real money transactions will be removed from the game on this date, and the season will last for twelve weeks until the game's uh, servers shut down on June sixth. Following a shutdown, Velen said that it's planning a release uh, to release a standalone player-hosted version of the game on PC. Hmm. So uh, I guess it's sort of similar to what they've done on certain Steam games by having active communities that are run by the community themselves. 
yeah. probably a good idea for those who actually really want, like the game. So that's fine. It just means that EA haven't got to put up the money for the servers, I guess. So, uh, anyway, this is a quote. Uh, creating such a different game with no points of comparison and running live services for the first time in many of our careers has also made the past couple of years particularly challenging, the studio said in a blog post. Uh, despite over 12 million players and billions of KOs around the globe, there are several aspects of the game in, in need of major disruption to better attract and retain enough players to be sustainable. Live yes. service... Uh, since we are a... Go on, Karen. I was just going to say, live service takes... It's People don't realize that's a whole department. You know. It is, and we will discuss that very okay. soon. So, since we are a small indie studio, it's simply impossible for us to make those kinds of uh, systemic changes in the live game mm -hmm. while continuing to support it. So it became clear to us that we needed to take a step back and pave the way for Velen to do what what we do best by innovating. And that's where I'll leave it for now. Because I am going to go on to the uh, probably the, mm, not the biggest one of that out of all of them. This probably was the more surprising out of all of them though. What's that? Are we starting to get a theme just yet, by any chance? Epic's Rumble versus shutting down after just six months. Yeah. That one is the biggest one so far. Uh, yes. Rumbleverse, the free-to-play uh, free to play brawler by developer Iron Galaxy. Who... They made KI seasons two, 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 three, and four, which is what makes this surprising. Mm -hmm. uh, and publisher Epic Games. Even more surprising that yeah. shut down a live service game. I know. Uh, we'll yeah, shut down at the end of, end of this month. This month. So live services for Rumbleverse will go offline on February 28th at uh, 10 a.m. CST. So that's Central Standard mm -hmm. Time. Texas uh, time. Six... Yeah, so that's, that's six time. hours before. So yeah, minus six hours to us. Yes, it is. That is literally Texas time, so... Oh, 4pm GMT. 4pm GMT, 28th. If you actually play that game, be there. There you go. Because <laughs> you won't be um, there. Yes. Uh, just watch yourself get blipped out of existence on that game. Oh, and it won't goodness. be like a Fortnite event. It'll just be like a damp squid. Oh, goodness. Anyway. Uh, any players who spent money on Rumble vs. Eligible, eligible for a refund of money spent in... On or in the game. Oh my gosh. So, I play to them, okay? They're giving refunds. That's fair enough. Fair. Uh, yeah. On Tuesday, the game's final update will be deployed and the current battle pass granted to everyone. XP gains will be also be doubled and additional accessories and emotes unlocked for free. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, developer Iron Galaxy, which is also known for 2013's Killer Instinct reboot, it wasn't originally. Right. Sorry, that was Double Helix who did a season yeah. one. Thank you. It's true. Who then sold on to Amazon. And I couldn't believe it because that should have been a much, much bigger release than it was. And it was just. Uh, well, uh, let's just say that the. Uh, the uh, distribution model for KI yeah. wasn't exactly desirable. Exactly, one hundred percent. It wasn't to me. I mean, no, it wasn't to core, anyone. The core game itself was not to my standards, but then again, the auto double system I found to be overly complicated. That's just that was such a like slam dunk. It's freaking Killer mm. Instinct. I still can't believe we messed that up. But anyway, continue well, on. Well, at least they still. Well, anyway, the only one of the good things that came out of Killer in the USA was Mick Gordon's soundtrack. Oh yes, and we do love Mick Gordon. It slaps Ooh. still. I listened to it the other day. It still slaps. He's so um, talented. Uh, so they wrote in a heartfelt note on its website that it hoped it would attract, uh, be able to resurrect Rumbleverse in the future. Uh, it, it is our sincerest hope that this news does not mark the end. Rumbleverse. We may not yet have seen the Rumble in its final form. Now, this is the more interesting one, because actually this is a more unique game out of all of them. It is, and probably the better known game. Funny, so you can't... Be... And probably the better known game, uh, at least mm -hmm. to me. 
Uh, out of all of them, I would say probably so. Maybe because it's the more recent out. But yeah. I would say so because it it wasn't your typical bang bang shooty bang bang sort of exactly free play game. It was an actual wrestling game, which made yep. it more fun. Um, I had it downloaded for ages and never got around to playing it because I didn't know anybody who played it. Yeah, and I probably was not going to play it. Um, well, it was on Epic. You kind of had no choice to download it on there. Um. So, wait, is that the last game or you got one more? No, I've got two more. Two more? Okay, hurry up. Yeah, but this one is at least in one article. Okay. So, have we guessed the theme yet again? Um, yeah. Because EA is cancelling Apex Legends Mobile yeah. and Battlefield Mobile. So Electronic Which... Arts has announced that it's ending, uh, it's ending support for Apex Legends Mobile and cancelling Battlefield Mobile before its official release. Which really sucks because I'm currently, for whatever reason, who knows, I'm just in a phase, I am a mobile player. And then to find out that Battlefield is being cancelled before it's even released... <laughs> Which makes me sad because I was looking forward to that. It's just mm. like, like almost all my live service games are mobile games because that works. That model works on mobile. It um, does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Like literally everything I play on mobile is live service. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, let me just finish the story and we yeah. can discuss proper because this is the last one, I promise. <laughs> That's what So. Is. Uh, VentureBeat reports that EA will also close Battlefield Mobile developer uh, Industrial Toys, the studio uh, headed by Bungie former uh, uh, founder and former CEO yep. Alex Serapin, yep. uh, uh, which EA acquired in 2018. Apex Legends Mobile launched in May 2022, yep. was named last year's App Store and Google Play Game of the Year, which, yes. uh, with B Battlefield Mobile was in soft launch. Yep. Uh, Apex Legends mobile service will go offline 4 p.m. PT on May the 1st. I really... That's the one that just blows my mind. Mm. As, a, so that's as a mobile the, player. Yeah, so that's going to be midnight our time on the 2nd of May, right? Yep, that is correct. Good. Good to know I still know my time zones. Very good. Um, at Respawn, we aim to provide players with uh, games that are that are consistently okay. That are consistently what? That's uh, that's the quote. I'm not even joking. Just At Respawn, consistent. we aim to provide players with games that are consistently. Oh, the EA Studios. The EA Studios. It must have been a typo. Yeah. But even if you said consistent, consistently what? I need to know. Even if it was supposed to be consistent, that is not. That is not a good statement. That is not a good statement. Consistently need to know what you mean. This oh is confusing. Oh dear. Okay, can we talk about it now? Uh, well, let me just finish reading this quote and then okay. we'll, we'll, we'll have at it. Uh, following a strong start, the content pipeline for uh, Apex Legends Mobile began to fall short of that for of that bar for quality, quantity, and cadence. <laughs> See, that's what's crazy to me. And cadence. Yeah, you know, I know. Weird... I have. I know, I'm so confused. Uh, yeah. Uh, it is, it, sorry, let me finish the statement. Oh, okay. It is for this reason, after months of, of working with our development partner, that we have made the mutual decision to sunset our mobile game. I mean, who uses gosh. the word sunset in an official statement? Oh my gosh. I mean, I have used, heard it used before, but maybe not an official. Oh my god. No, not like this. Not like this. Oh, thank you everyone for doing it. We've, de we've decided to take it out back and shoot it. There you go. Like, how things. stupid does that I how just... stupid does that sound in a statement? I... It's a <laughs> terrible statement from beginning to end. Um, yeah, but... so let me finish anyway. Okay. Just one more sentence. It's, it's, although disappointing, we are proud of the game we launched. Are grateful for the support of, of, of the Apex Apex Legends community, and are confident that this is the right decision for players. Oh my gosh! There is the so... right decision for players would be to keep the bloody surface yes. open. There's so much wrong with that statement alone. Second of all, it's freaking Apex Legends. That thing is that queue is never empty. It's a full game all the time. 
even mobile. I'm so confused. So, okay. Here's my thoughts on it. And then Pete can do his thoughts. The only thing I can think of, because, okay, so the smaller studios, I totally get. As I said, live service takes specialists. It takes its own department. Destiny, or Bungie rather, Bungie is the best live service talent out there uh, with consistent results. But having said all that, that's, you know, small studios, yes. But these bigger studios, the only thing I can think of that they're closing the stuff down is because of inflation, global inflation. Knowing that consumers are not going to have as much uh, pocket money to throw at games for microtransactions, I guess. You know? Mm. Because I really can't think of any other reason for this. Because I did last month alone, and this is terrible. I'm going to admit this. I can't believe I'm going to admit this. I spent like 20 quid on microtransactions. <laughs> I can't say anything because I have spent plenty of money on, I, uh, on full guys. I don't, that's true. I don't usually spend microtransactions, but last month was just a difficult month, okay? And I was like, this game is making uh, me happy. I'm going to give money to it. I, I'm feeling all the sad. Here's my <laughs> voice. Exactly. That's me. And it paid off and it was great. And I had a great, you know, like tons of hours of gameplay for it. Um, I had gr I had a great hit of serotonin as I put <laughs> my credit card serotonin. information. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> but, um, but having said all that, I really can't figure out the direction... That they're trying to go with this it has to be cutting costs but i don't know microtransactions are so profitable like so profitable i would say too profitable too profitable for sure and then you've got it's a global market you know mm -hmm. but like i said someone on twitter said this is the uh, end of an era live service games are dead i will say this Bungie is suffering. Now, part of that is because Bungie had blackouts, for lack of a better term, all last week. Like, they were okay. offline for Holy like, crap. yeah, like 48 hours at one point. Whoa. Yeah, over the last couple of weeks. And then they've had little mini blackouts. Um, but having, you know, even with that, they know that their business model is at the end of life. And they are trying to, quote, sunset it um, as soon as possible. If Bungie, the leader, is doing that, then I can kind of see, okay, no wonder these other studios are following suit. That's the wise yep. course of action. But it is just weird. Because, as you know, Pete, especially when Halo Infinite dropped, live service games has been it. You know, like... Ubisoft is supposed to be releasing Assassin's Creed, and that seems like, wait, yeah, that seems like the uh, best model for a live service game ever. You know. Well, you would like to think so, I but at this rate, is it even coming out? Yeah, it, I don't know, cause it's been two years, we've heard nothing. Um, yeah. Whereas Fallout seventy six seems to still be going. Which is insane. Um, how? Yeah, how? And ESO, uh, you know, Elder Scrolls I mean, Online is still going. I'm, I mean, look at the game. Uh, well, wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Distinct difference here is okay. that. Okay. They might be live service games, but they're mm -hmm. subscription based. So there, yeah, there's always an invest okay. there is always always an investment like to that. So you get dedicated players because they pay for it. Because it is more an MMO. Like in in mo and that too. And in most occasions, these games are just live service, free to like or free to play online games. You know. Mm -hmm. So the barrier of entry is obviously there for a lot more people to just go and sort of pick this up and go. Oh, I'm going to go and play it. Mm -hmm. And. Like obviously they sustain themselves through the through the 
No, because 76 even has a subscription model. Does it? Yeah, we covered it on the show called Fallout First. I forgot about all that. That See? hundred that hundred dollar a year that then got me no. to help by someone purchasing Fallout a few first. I forgot all about that, Pete. I axed that from my memory till you just said that because that is the stupidest, dumbest thing and I hate uh, it. this is why I moderate the news, because I actually remember what happened week to week. I'm just like, it's free to play from all I know, but no, I did forget. They sure as heck did do that. And it's dumb it is and free. it's stupid. It is technically free to play to some people. It's just not to everyone. Oh my gosh. But yeah, stupid that, as hell, all of it. It really is. But that game's still going strong. Oh, it's doing well for some strange reason. It keeps getting DLC. It keeps doing all right. But it's ESO's doing been bad. doing well for years. years. Well, you say that. Oh, no, no, no. No, a wrong game. A wrong game. Uh, ESO came out strong. Stayed strong. Yep. It I has. was thinking of Final Fantasy XIV. Oh, uh, it right. Came out, came out busted and then came out good with Realm Reborn. Yes. And then whatever's been recently released, which is 16? I don't remember. It's on no, 16 is still, um, is still in production, but it's, uh, an, it's not an online game. There's an online one that's been recently uh, released. Four, it's 14. Is it 14? Yeah, 14 really well. keeps going strong. That's crazy to me. It's been out for years at this point. It has been. Like, I remember when it came out. Um, and I was, like, rolling my eyes back then. Ugh, I don't want to play an always online game. <laughs> See? Ugh. And that's, like, years yeah, ago. Yeah, there we go. Well, there you go. There we have it, you know. Yeah. But yeah, there's a big, there is a very key difference between subscription-based uh, MMOs and live service games, and obviously live service games have to sustain, uh, sustain themselves with microtransactions, season yeah. passes, and stuff like that. So, which as long as the if, content if, is good, but I that's love the it. problem is that obviously like the 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 most recent example that we've had of this, uh, I wouldn't say most recent, probably most high-profile one that we've had is Halo Infinite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, look, full circle. I managed to bring it back to a point. With Halo Infinite. Oh, oh. <laughs> Halo Circle. That's what you should call it. Um, oh, you mean Halo Ring? That. Do that, Pete. I've drank a lot of Prosecco. I know. But, again, I just never got on board with the Halo. No, neither do I. Uh, the whole life. The whole. Like battle pass thing, live service stuff. Like removing the Xbox Live like barrier to entry was a good idea, but why? Well, but see, here's what's crazy to me. Halo Three had a little bit of it, but Halo Three ODST was where it really took off, where you could earn armor, and mm -hmm. the armor that you could earn was sexy AF. Holy crap! Yep. The Riabusa armor, my favorite. Which has been renamed, I think, in the Halo Infinite, but it's it's the same armor. Um, there's nothing like maybe I'm wrong. I'm gonna say something very controversial. It's gonna probably put off a few of our listeners. Oh, what a surprise! You say, oh wait, it's usually me that says it. <laughs> the cat ears. I just was like that. Even though I know that was like their biggest seller, that just did something to me. That was like no. No Spartans are going to be running around with cat ears and key charms hanging off of their guns. That just... I'm sorry, I take Halo serious. You can ask okay. me. Let, me. let me say two words about the cat ears. They crap. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are crap. I <laughs> they're say, a waste of time. They, like, I get that they're not marketing to people like me, but you can ask Pete. Like, when we play Halo or whatever, I'm, like, dead serious in the mindset. I'm like... <laughs> Why does a Spartan have male carriers on the helmet? What a I'm stupid just, thing. <laughs> I'm just like, what are you doing? This is not how Spartans act. Um, but I will admit, A, I'm autistic, <laughs> which it really comes out. But B, I'm well versed in the lore and read all the the extracurricular books and graphic novels and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm completely put off. Um, yeah. As soon as those ears came up, I was like, I'm over this. This the the, the samurai helmet was the only one that was actually worthwhile to me. Yeah, but.
that's what I'm saying. Like, the samurai helmet, I believe, turned up in ODST. It might have been Halo 3 at one point. Yeah, it did. And it was awesome. But, but, yeah. yeah, and it was like, oh, this is cool. And then the fl- my favorite thing, which was my favorite in Halo 3, the flames on the helmet, but then they added it to the shoulders. Like, no lie, Kieran's armor, uh, when we would do Halo 3, uh, not Halo 3, <laughs> we do Halo Infinite, like, yeah. multiplayer, us three, I love the flames. I loved them back then. I love them now. Outside of that, they didn't do anything cool. I, like, I would not... There was nothing that just struck my fancy. And then the color choices were bad. I realize I'm rambling right now, but guys, this is, like, super important stuff to me. <laughs> no, but it's, it's a discussion about live services. Like, yeah. The thing is, is, like, how do you balance content with, like, like decent monetization well, to keep the game going? And Destiny drained so much money in a, in a good way out of me. And I mean this in a good way. I have never bought, well, I'm, I don't usually buy things like battle passes and stuff like that. I'm not, Nor I'm do too, I usually. Yeah, I'm very stingy with my money in that regard. That's why I have money because I don't spend it at willy nilly. But Destiny had such good content, their storylines were great at the time. After the Witch Queen, I don't know what happened, <laughs> but something happened. Well, Sony bought them. Uh, I don't really think. Don't you mean it'd be on light? <sighs> no, the the after that, the one oh. that we didn't buy, um, that none oh, of us bought. Even yeah. Karen didn't buy it because it was. Oh like, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, um, I mean, he yeah, that was now, the, that was... but back then he didn't. Um, no. But like, the battle pass was great uh just just stuff that was it was just worth it because and and here's how i balance it in my head which i think a lot of people who buy live service stuff do this the amount of time i spend if it's like a significant amount of hours you know what that's worth it to the devs who work so hard on this they should get my money for that um which is Mm. why you know like like i said last month i dropped 20 in total not at once you know like 20 quid Uh, across two or three games because I spent hours in those games and the devs deserved that. I'm okay with that. Am I okay with doing that with Halo Infinite? No, I bought the last battle pass like before the winter update. That was was the first one, wasn't it? Uh, mm, I think it was the the second second one. one. Yeah, I think it was the second one. Uh, We got the first one for free. and then Yeah, we did actually. Yeah. I think it was the next one I paid for. But whatever it was, it was right before the winter update one. And I got nothing out of that. It was poor. It was so poor. And it didn't compel me. Whereas Destiny, I was like, I was happy to get off work, hop on Destiny, and grind. Because I love that kind of stuff. I'm autistic. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah. I think the thing was is that I, I did it with Destiny where I bought one season pass and then I stopped mm-hmm. playing halfway through the season. It was like, oh, this yeah. is a waste of money. Yeah, but that's um, what I'm saying. But then, mm-hmm. Yeah, but then again, like I did, I didn't do the same thing with Fall Guys. I bought, mm, mm-hmm. I bought the season pass for that and I there actually completed, completed the hell out of it because I love the game itself. Yeah. I and then I've obviously because I basically got the game for free on multiple platforms apart from the PlayStation. Yeah. Which. I did pay money for it when it was cheap anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I have felt that I wanted to support developers, so I've done a exactly. couple of season, uh, a couple of the season passes, and I've also just bought costumes outright, because yeah. I think they kind of deserve it, because they do a lot of good work with that, and that's where I think the difference is with live service, is that if you do it right, and your game is compelling enough, then mm-hmm. people will want to support you because of that reason, but... You know, it does require that your main company, who are helping to publish you, have faith in you as well. And it's very right. clear that obviously Epic, EA, and um, uh, who was the first Sony. one? Oh no, it was um, who did Crossfire? Uh, oh frick! I Who's can't remember I anyway. Just, yeah. Either way, like whoever whoever the parent company that was like mm-hmm. publishing Crossfire, like well, clearly didn't have a lot of faith in. I think it probably was, but yeah. who the 
the, the I'm pretty parent, sure the publisher like, was, but I don't know who the developer. Yeah, but who the developer was as well. But if yeah, if the developer's not being supported by the publisher, then the developer's not really going to exactly. do anything with the game. Then no, of you know, they, not. they need to have. There needs to be a good commitment by both parties, really, and the consumer base as well, to actually want to play the game. So clearly, player numbers were dwindling on all of these. So they just thought, well, what's the point in maintaining server space and? maintaining you know monetary value or monetary cost in terms of development time yeah. we might as well just call it a day and then start a new project yeah. which is which is a disappointment because obviously some of these are like very well respected live service games oh, some definitely. of them are probably not so much let's say uh, crossfire being the, probably the particular one yeah but you know it's just it's just disappointing to see that certain companies like iron galaxy are making these kinds of games and then they're just they're, they're just falling flat, unfortunately, and it's just. Well, I think I think we're you know, because of Fortnite. Let's let's blame Fortnite in this one. That, yeah. You know, everyone thought that they were gonna they were gonna get an instant cash cow, and that was it. But what they forgot about it is that Epic spent a long time actually creating Fortnite, and it was and the money. battle royale mode that that. Oh, that the, the least amount of time that gets the most amount of money. Yeah. But it's the fact that they continually update it. They're continually doing stuff with it. They're continually engaging with with the community, but they are also continually engaging with other companies for crossovers. You know, yeah. it helps with that. It's a constant revenue source for them. If they can see them, if they can see numbers on a page in terms of the players. Then they can see dollar amounts on on their balance sheets. Then it's. It's not hard I mean, to work out. This is the thing. Let's 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 say this, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Yeah, hour and a half, by the way. So that's okay. That's actually really yeah. good. Um, so oh crap, it'll come back. Hold on, Fortnite. Um, yeah. So cash grab. That was what I was going for. Cash grab. Yes. Is I'm not gonna say it's good, but there is an audience for it. Put it that way. Mm-hmm. The audience that's for that is not going to be across the board in that you can't make every single game that comes out, kind of like every single TV show that's coming out now, you cannot make them a carbon copy of each other. No. You know, there are different audiences. And you can make money off of anything. If Halo had done a very good game that was continuously updated with the main storyline, um, mm -hmm. They could have got lots of microtransactions out of us. I know. Oh yeah, I very would. easily. Yeah, um, you know, if they would have unlocked uh, or or added more parts of the map, you know, with DLC, um, you know, stuff like that. Red Dead Redemption Two is a very good example of that. Red Dead Redemption Two didn't have DLC in the main game. It does on the online version, but not on the main game. Yeah, but then you've also got a cost of entry to be able to play online now too. Yeah. But if they had continuously updated Red Dead, as in the solo campaign, not the online version, uh, with DLC and extra stuff, I would have bought horse armor. <laughs> no, but I would have bought probably like cool saddles and stuff like that, different things for my horse or uh, you know different outfits, you know, little things like that. Yeah. But they don't do that because they're looking for again. Fortnite. They're looking for the Fortnite killer, we'll say. And you're not going to find that in the same fan base that plays um, RDR2, that plays Halo, that plays Destiny even. Yeah, there's some crossover between Destiny and Fortnite, but not all the way. You know, that's yeah. a whole different audience. Um, yeah, you're not, you're not going to get the same audience that's playing Fall Guys that are going to want to go and play something like Rumbleverse. Right, exactly. Yeah, Fall Guys is a totally different audience. Uh, you know, and Among Us and all that. Um, also, hilarious videos exist of Among Us VR where, like, grown-ups are terrifying children, and they are quite funny. Anyway, that's a side note, because that I'm getting That is very tired. much a side note. Let's call it a night, I think then. we should. Um, plus, I have lots of VODs to go watch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but we do thank you for joining us. Uh, it has been a wonderful discussion, one of my favorite kinds of discussions. Also, join us and, and join in the discussion with the Last of Us TV show. We love that. Um, there's, a, there's a public channel on our Discord, Rapid yep. Reviews UK for it. You can find the link in the show notes for that. 
Pete, are you giving away your location now for people to contact you? Yes. Okay. Pete, where can they contact you? Uh, so you can find me on various discords, including the Rapid Reviews UK Discord, Modern Escapism, and uh, the What the Frick Do You Want pod, uh, podcast Twitter, uh, Discord as well. Yep. I'm in a few others, so I won't advertise them because they're rival podcasts, damn you. <laughs> um, but also, I am now back on Twitter, so if you want to get in contact with me there, uh, it's at Pete Beckett one Woo! What, uh, what about you? You can find me over on the Instagram, the Gram, otherwise, as it's known, at Kylie yeah. Yellick, which is K L A Y E L I K. We can track my wonderful weight loss. Holy crap! I've lost Doing so much well, weight. Doing well, by the way. I'm completely shocked and astounded. Astounded because the thing about weight loss is you don't realize you're losing weight. Um, but like, yeah, I. I, I had to blame over Christmas. I was going to say, I can look at Pete and I can see he's lost a lot of weight. Now, no, I have not. I feel see, like I've eaten like crap on holiday. See, this is what I'm saying. Like, I visually can see that. But does Pete see that when he looks in the mirror or feel that? No. And the same no. thing with me. <laughs> I see a fat <laughs> slob. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Which is exactly how I feel about myself. So it is a very interesting thing to watch this it, journey it, unfold. Uh, it is a very interesting thing. Let me because, just say, perception is a horrible thing sometimes. Yep, yeah, it's true. We all have this weird perception of ourselves. Uh, it's just mind blowing. Like I had to actually, and Pete will have to do this too. I had to actually see side by side comparison photos mm -hmm. to go. Yeah, I had to oh, do that a couple of times. I lost a bunch of weight over this last year. <laughs> also, yeah. I gained a bunch of weight last year. <laughs> well, it was during <laughs> yeah. the lockdown. Uh, I'd already started losing, but the lockdown was at my biggest. I was just like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. But anyway, so yeah, go to Instagram for that. And apparently for Killian Murphy pictures because Instagram started suggesting those to me, which is weird because I literally oh. only follow gym people and pandas. Oh, almost like if you search something on but I did thing. It comes in an algorithm. No, that's what's so crazy to me. I've or never... maybe if you put it on another app and no, it, you know, not picks on, up. And... Not on Facebook either. Unless it is across Google. Which it's I across Google. I might have Googled some Killian Murphy. No, it's not like your Twitter was a dead giveaway with the Killian oh Murphy picture was staring at me just before we started recording. It is beautiful. Moving I on, cannot, let's go. I am Come totally, on. No. No. I'll, let's I'm let's gonna finish watch, the damn episode. No, I'm going to do a double feature in June. I think it's in June. Possibly July. I'm going to watch Oppenheimer, and then I'm going to watch the Barbie movie, and it's going to be the greatest day I've ever experienced in my life. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much to our chat. Hey, Nana. Um, and we will see you and talk to you next week. Bye. What the hell was even that? That's how we end the episode. Our episode. <laughs> we'll do two or three minutes because I'm so tired. Yeah, give me a second. It's nine uh, o'clock. I know. Which shouldn't be bedtime, but I think it's bedtime now. Uh, I think you might be. Yeah, I start yeah, winding down. Regret. And like. I still, still got watch it to do. You still got. Oh, yeah. Just don't oh, watch still... it. Just be, you do. No, no. Just take some notes. Go watch some highlights from YouTube. Do I have to? I mean, you can watch. I mean, it even that's painful enough. I know. I just turn the sound off and I. Can I just? Wa uh, I might just watch it at double speed. There you go. Oh, I love double speed. Actually, actually, you know what? Should I watch it at five times speed so at least Chris Hemsworth is like <laughs> talking like a chipmunk? Yes. Uh, that. I mean, it would probably be the only way that would make Natalie Portman enjoyable. Oh my goodness! It's, but in that in that particular movie, yes, with her no, CGI I just meant generally. muscles. Ugh. Generally. Ugh. To be fair. No, I, don't, I mean, did you I don't did like you? Her. Okay, did you watch episode two? Of what? Star Wars episode two. Oh yes, yes, yes. Back yes. of the yes. Yeah. She was very wooden in that. Yes, she was. <laughs> Very good impression, Pete. <laughs> it was intended. It was bloody... Oh. Oh. 
Oh my goodness. No, I I I, God. Just, I don't like anything that's out currently. I am hoping that literally that Oppenheimer and Barbie movie are going to be just amazing. There's Oppenheimer nothing. better be good. It has to be. You know what I love about the trailer? Let's talk about the trailer for two seconds. I haven't seen the trailer yet. I don't want to. There's, uh, no, this is no. what's great about no, the trailer. Let me, no, let me tell you. I am not watching it. Okay, that's fine. But what I love about the trailer, and this is not spoilers, so don't worry. It never shows the bomb. Like, that's his whole thing. His whole reason of existence. Reason de... Uh, oh, yeah, of course. The French word. Reason de terre. Um, Raison de... Yeah, that. Uh, <laughs> I'm so tired. Uh, I know. And but, drunk. And drunk. But um, they don't even show the bomb. And I freaking Good. love that. Like, how do you do that? How do you show... It's like showing Godzilla. <laughs> like the Godzilla trailer. Remember, like the 1999 Godzilla trailer? And they never... No, what was that? Oh, 98. I think I'm thinking of Cloverfield, where they never showed the monster. That's what I'm uh, thinking of, is Cloverfield. Uh, they did at the very end. I can't remember. I remember... No, in, um, in Cloverfield, they showed it very, very briefly at the end, and there was a reason why they didn't, because it was, like, the Jaws problem. Yes, that's correct. But at the time, I didn't know it. And I was doing the ARG. Oh, I was so obsessed with Cloverfield. And then the movie came out, and it was like, eh, it's okay. Look, I still like Cloverfield. It's probably... With right. with except with exception to Fringe, is actually one of the best J.J. Abrams projects. Oh now yes, now I will say that that was the first time I'd heard of him. It was good quality for that. I actually didn't like his run on Star Trek. To be fair, it's awful. Uh, yeah, and I'm not is. even a Star Trek fan. It's awful. I am a Star. Or I used to be like as a kid. I'm not now, uh, but as a kid, I was a Star Trek fan, and I watched mm. that. And no, but. Cloverfield, I was overhyped. I got too hyped for it because I had an Yeah, I think I might have to agree with that, actually. Yeah. That's like AI, the movie. It had an ARG. Oh, God. And I was obsessed that was with that. was terrible. Oh, it's terrible. It's awful. I actually got in a... I'm not going to say debate, but pretty close to debate. Uh, debate. On one of my podcasts... Like, I had a friend, but he's not like just a casual person that does podcast no he's like a professional um yep. he and his uh business partner they did like a, a an actual you know full-fledged commercial podcast and we yep. actually got a debate on that because uh they were so pro ai because he loves stanley kubrick to this day I mean, I could not... yeah, I, I like Kubrick, but... I love Kubrick, too, to an extent. To an extent. I mean, he is a masochist, but... Um, <clears throat> but I do like his, you know, absolute dedication to the, the, the art and everything. But AI is not... I just never know. Look, Q, um, look as much as I love it, like, as much as I love Kubrick movies... It's not really a Kubrick movie. It's more not of really. a... It's a it, it's more. It's a, it's a yeah. Spielberg joint. More than anything. And that's what I because the, the main premise itself was written by Kubrick, but he finished the, the vast majority of that film off. Well, see that that's my thing. I think that had Kubrick actually done AI, I might have liked it. Might have. I agree. Yeah. That ending was ah oh, no thank you. Uh, Nana says, <laughs> of course it went off the rails at the end. Yes. Chat Always GPT, does. solid diffusion, and everything like this should be outlawed for life. I, I'm gonna say my little piece on that. I said Please this. Please do. I'm I, interested. I said this on Twitter. I say it now, and I'll say it forever. Uh, AI in mathematics and science, yes, absolutely. Holy crap! Why are they trying to come for us creatives? Why? I don't understand. And yes, um, mm -hmm. what? I think they. I think they already are. That's what I'm saying. I don't understand why. And I okay, think they've you, been uh, writing movies. Awesome yeah, I was going to say, if you watched the Marvel movie recently. That's what I'm saying. Remember that episode of South Park, Osimo? Uh, yes, I do. And it's terrible. It's my favorite. Osimo I'm not 3, a fan 000? of it. I'm not a fan of it. Why? Because he gets diddled? No, it's oh. just... A, I think most of the episode is kind of overrated, to be honest. Oh, I love it. It's not Osimo. one of my favorites. I, I like the premise for it. I just think his well, delivery is not well done. 
Well, the premise is, for those who don't know, uh, Osimo is Carmen dressed up as a robot. Uh, He's trying to make friends with Butters. But he becomes a uh, movie AI creator. He creates movies for, for this movie studio. So he just writes scripts and he just comes up with this random stuff. And it's that was like 10 years ago. And if Trey Parker and Matt Stone are saying, hey, movies are being created with AI 10 years ago, you cannot convince me that they're not being created now. And yes, Marvel movies, I think, are the epitome of AI-generated scripts. I think they are. Yeah. I really do. And, uh, I really do. Yeah, I keep... So, Nana says it sucks because a lot of YouTubers I know have just become AI bot grifters now. Here's what the, is crazy to me. I get targeted advertising on various things. Yep. Because I'm a business owner. And it says, hire us. We will generate. Get this, guys. I'm a freaking professional writer. I've been published three times. And I have somebody trying to offer me. Ghostwrite you. No, not even ghostwrite. Here's your own AI bot to write your blog freaking post. Blog. Brilliant. Blog posts are supposed to be personal, informal, and casual. Mm. And they're trying to get me to buy an AI that will write blog posts for me. No, thank you. Absolutely mm. not. Absolutely not. Yeah, no. No thanks. <sighs> and the thing is, like, you watch some of these AI bros, which are crypto bros as well, and they're like, oh, now artists don't have, you know, the, uh, like, they, they're not gatekeeping art anymore. Guess what? You're either born an artist or you're not. I'm sorry. Art can't be taught. It can be refined. You, you mean you're either born a creative or you're born a yeah, uh, there you consumer. Go. Yeah. Um, creativity cannot be taught. It can be refined and it can yes. be sharpened and it can be cleaned up. But you either have it or you don't. And I'm sorry if you don't and you want it. You know, I was born into a very artistic family and I'm the least artistic of all of them so even though i still have creative talent i'm still the black sheep of the family so i know what it feels like to be sitting there going oh i wish i could you know sing better or draw better or act better or whatever um it sucks but that doesn't mean i'm gonna go get a freaking ai and be like now this is what i have done (laughs) no you haven't the robot did it and also, I'm going to say this, and I won't, we'll wrap it up. Um, I mentioned at the top of the show about my skin condition. And yeah. this is not against anyone, because I know we, we have a lot of HSers out there who listen to the show. Um, HS is what I think it's called. Yeah, I, I get it. Um, and I appreciate that so, so much. And you're very, 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 like, welcome and welcomed here and supported and stuff. But I can't support the AI that wrote a HS point because I spent seven years in college. Yes, yes, that is like three years too many. I really do understand that. <laughs> I shouldn't have been in college that long. But I was really bad at it. I'm not a good student. But I have had like three or four years of specifically poet- poetry education. Yeah. The poems that are being generated by Chat GPT are awful. Some of them are really funny, though. They might be funny, but they are. Some of them are really funny. Here's what I will say don't use Chat GPT for your college, university level homework because you're going to get laughed out the door. Yeah, do not. Bad idea. Very. It is still funny though. Very bad. Um, but yeah, no, there is a lot of funny things about it. No, uh, there is one thing I did see the other day that was that? really funny. Is that... <laughs> oh dear. This was on Switch the other day. Oh dear. There's an AI generated comedy show that's sort of supposed oh, to be like Seinfeld it's like... and it's bloody hilarious. I have heard so, so much about this. I have not. It's... So funny. I have not <laughs> checked it out. I have been sent this link by like oh, three or four people on Discord. Honestly, you, you need to come watch it. It's really <laughs> funny. <laughs> I 
just I keep checking all these Discord messages, and it's that link to the Seinfeld type comedy show written by an AI, and it's like you need honestly you need to oh treat gosh. yourself and go what the bit of this. Oh dear, it's so good. But uh, I wish we could sort of like part of me wishes that I had the ability to be able to just pull it up on Twitch and show it to you guys right uh, now because it is just so funny. We'll have to get that. It's appalling. Yeah, we do need to get that sorted because I think doing some watches of stuff actually. Oh, by the way, I need to talk to you about an idea I had afterwards. So. Okay, because I'm falling asleep now, Pete. Yeah, I'm I sleeping. know. I know. It's fine. I think we need to end this because I'm full of Prosecco and sleepiness. And holy crap, I just hit my knee on my desk. <laughs> I mean, you could have styled that out like a pro, like, but you know. No. <laughs> Yeah. I have a very long day tomorrow. It's going to be full of anger, and I don't think I'm going to make it to the gym. Uh, so I need to wrap this up. Yeah, But no would worries. you thank you so much. Again, Nana, thank you for joining us. Uh, yes, mate. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.